In association with Grant Thornton, the Liverpool Daily Post presents a business debate on the government's public sector cuts and considers the consequences for Merseyside. Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to the offices of Grant Thornton here in the magnificent setting of the Royal Liver Building uh, at Liverpool's Pier Head. And uh, to introduce the people who are with us, first of all, uh, starting from my extreme right, we have Max Steinberg, who is the Chief Executive of Liverpool Vision. Max, welcome. Thank you. Uh, we have uh, Phil Woolley, who is the uh, public sector expert for Grant Thornton. Uh, we have Jack Stopforth, who is the Chief Executive of Liverpool's Chamber of Commerce. Uh, and then moving over to my left, we have uh, Joe Anderson, Councillor Joe Anderson, who is the leader of Liverpool City Council. Then we have Tony Bell, who is the Chief Executive of the Royal Liverpool Hospital. Then we have Neil Sturmey, who is the Senior Partner in Liverpool for Grant Thornton. And finally, but by no means least, we have Professor Michael Parkinson, uh, from John Moores University, who is one of the uh, leading experts on regeneration issues. Gentlemen, thank you very much all for attending this morning. And I wondered if we could sort of get the ball rolling by just uh, starting, perhaps again with Max, just getting everyone's brief reaction to uh, their views of the announcement yesterday. Max, was it more or less what you expected, worse or better, and how are you feeling about the world this morning? Uh, well, the thing is the sun has risen this morning and, and life is going on um, and life will go on. I think it's like a lot of budgets. There are some things in there actually which will benefit uh, Liv the Liverpool City region. But offset against that, 490,000 public sector jobs being lost in the, uh, in, in the country, possibly some 16,000 public sector jobs in the Liverpool City region, possibly some 7,000 actually in Liverpool itself. That loss of spending power in the region alongside those opportunities, I think is going to be very challenging for us. Um, I was pleased about the protection of transport investment, the, 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 the Mersey Gateway, I think the protection of science and research funding, the strong links that are now being made between Liverpool and Darsbury. I think the question we might be discussing today is to what extent can the private sector and business respond to those very challenging um, circumstances. Thank you. Uh, Phil Woolley? Uh, I think I'd echo those, the, those views. Um, there's some, some good news uh, in terms of infrastructure projects. I think the government has taken a view that they'll support infrastructure projects that they deem to be adding um, economic value and, and, and supporting economic growth, so Mersey Gateway goes ahead. I think there's good news in that the, 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 the big hospital projects uh, in the city are going to continue, um, but put against that, there's some uh, very swinging cuts as well, and particularly local authority funding is going to be hit very hard, as is funding for social housing, which are going to be very difficult to manage. Thank you, Phil. And Jack Stopforth? Well, Max uh, recited those, those figures, <coughs> you know, building up with 7,000 local uh, public sector job losses, 16,000 for the city region, and obviously nearly half a million nationally. I think that really uh, sets out the challenge for the private sector. Um, there's no way, uh, whether it's on a local basis or nationally, and despite what might have been said in national papers recently, that the private sector is in a condition to simply step in and take up that slack today. Uh, and so there, there has to be uh, the closest possible collaboration between public and private sectors. OK, thank you very much. And Joe Anderson, it's obviously going to be a particular challenge for you at a time like this because you may be the man in the position to have to decide to shed some of these jobs. We've got to uh, pick ourselves up dust ourselves down and, 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 and get on with it. We'll take waste and inefficiency out where we can. But the reality is is that there's going to be many job cuts in Liverpool uh, and many job cuts in the city region. And as you rightly said, we've come so far. So the challenge is for us to try and keep regeneration going uh, and try and keep the improvements going. Thank you, Joe. Uh, and Tony Bell, I mean, you're in the middle of exciting times, the Royal Liverpool Hospital with a new hospital about to be built, but how badly do you think this yesterday's announcement is like to impact on things? Uh, we have got a lot going on and we've got a lot of opportunity as well. Uh, and it's those opportunities we're really going to have to work hard at uh, around this table and around this city uh, to make sure that we can actually uh, make it work for us. Uh, because it's certainly going to be the order of the day uh, that the public and the private sector really get their act together. We've got to do that. And um, Neil Sterney. Having discussion between public and private, I think, is one way of uh, trying to find some solutions to the very difficult uh, times we're going to face. The only other thing I'd perhaps add as a point of detail about the, the local impact 
is of course uh, the university student population is very significant in, in this city. You know, Forty or fifty thousand um, uh, students here, I think, is the right figure. Thank you. And uh, Michael, you're obviously very much involved in uh, higher education. Um, how do you see the overall impact of today's, of yesterday's announcement? I was thinking my emotions, it's kind of regret, fear and anger. Regret because we've come a very long way in a very short time. I mean, 15 years ago we were on our knees. We couldn't have taken this hit then. We probably can now. Six months ago said, you know, look carefully where these cuts will hurt most and make sure they don't hurt the most vulnerable people, the most vulnerable places. And I don't think that was listened to, to be perfectly honest.